In this video, I'm going to be teaching you everything there is to know about click detectors on Roblox. I'll be showing you the mouse hover enter event, the mouse hover leave event, the mouse click event, as well as the right mouse click event. As you can see, I just got a sword from right clicking this part. You'll also see that down here, I printed clicked by cyber creator, and I'll be showing you how to figure out which player actually clicked the part. In addition to that, I'll be showing you the properties of cursor icon. You'll notice that whenever I mouse over this part, my cursor icon changes. I'll also be showing you the max activation distance property. So whenever I walk away from this, I can no longer click it. All right, the first thing that we're gonna do is go to the home tab and insert a part. Click on the bottom right here and insert a spear. After that, click the part in Explorer. If you don't have to explore, go to view, insert open Explorer and properties by clicking these and then just go back to the home tab. Click on the part in the Explorer, click the plus insert a script, then also a click detector. In addition to that, what we're gonna do is go back to the home tab, click on toolbox, go to the models and scroll down till you find the sword, insert the sword by clicking it, click no, and then just drag it into replicated storage. As you can see, I already have one here, but we're gonna be using that later for the right click event. You can close the toolbox after that and we can get scripting. So the first thing that we wanna do Get going to reference the part that we just inserted. So the script that parent is the parent of the script right here, this part. Again, just the part right here in workspace. After that, we want to get a reference to the click detector. So we'll do detector equals part, if I can type correctly, part dot click detector. Then we can talk about the first event, which is the mouse click event. This event fires whenever the click detector is actually clicked. So we'll do mouse click and colon connect and function player. And then any code right here will execute whenever the part is clicked. So whenever this is clicked with a left click, this function or this event will be triggered and this function will be called any code right here will execute. I have this player variable. And one thing that we could do is actually print the player who clicked the part. So we'll type clicked by space two periods to concatenate, and then we'll do player dot name. So this will make it print clicked by cyber creator if I click it. As you can see, I'll walk over to the part and I'll click it and it says clicked by cyber creator. But we wanna do a little bit more than that. We're going to toggle the anchored property of the part by doing part dot anchored equals not part dot anchored. So if the part anchored was true, it will be not true. If it was false before, it would be not false. To show this in action, I'll run over to the part and as you can see, it starts moving because it's not anchored. I click it, it stops. I click it again and it continues moving and then it stops. In addition to that, we'll just change some properties. So we'll use the anchor property. So if the part is anchored, then we'll change the brick color right here. We'll do part dot brick color equals brick color dot new. And then whatever brick color you want, I'll just do bright red. And then we're going to change the material, part.material equals enum.material.diamond plate. We'll also check to see if it's not anchored. And if it's not anchored, we'll change the brick color to part.brick color equals brick color dot new. And then we'll do bright yellow. And then we'll also change the material again down here part.material equals enum.material then dot wood. Now as you can see, whenever I click this part, the material changes to diamond plate and the color changes to red. I click it again and it changes to yellow and wood. That covers the mouse click event. Again, it's fired whenever a player clicks the part. It automatically passes the player who clicked the part to this function and any code in here is executed whenever it's clicked. Now we can talk about the mouse hover enter event. Type detector dot mouse hover enter connect this to a function and this will also receive the player who's hovering over the part and we'll change the part dot transparency equal to 0 0.5 whenever we hover over this part we'll copy this and we can discuss the mouse hover leave event so let's change that to leave i'll change the transparency to zero so now whenever we hover over the part the transparency will be set to 0 0.5 whenever the mouse leaves the part it will be set to zero to show this in action whenever i hover over this it changes to 0 0.5 transparency i leave it and it goes back to one or zero rather so as you can see whenever i hover over it 0 0.5 i leave it zero now we're not actually using the player variable right here you could use it. You could, you know, print this down here again, just what we printed up here, but that's not too useful. But 
If you do want to use it, feel free to add this variable. If you're not going to use it, you don't actually need it. So you can just delete that and it'll still work. Now let's talk about the right mouse click event. And before we use it, we're going to get replicated storage so that we can access that sword. So we'll type local replicated storage equals game get service replicated storage. And then we're going to get that sword. So we'll type local sword equals replicated storage dot classic sword. And it's not showing up for some reason, um, but it should work. Usually it uh, gives you the auto complete, but replicated storage dot classic sword. And make sure it's the it's two S's. There we go. That's, that's why I didn't show up before. Make sure it matches the name of the sword in replicated storage if you use something else. Now down at the bottom, we'll type detector dot right mouse click and connect this to another function. This also, again, receives the player who is using the right mouse on the part. And in this case, we'll actually be using it. But we're gonna make a copy of the sword. So we'll type local sword clone equals sword colon colon clone. So this makes a copy of the sword that's in replicated storage. So we can give it to a player and we'll just set the sword clone dot backpack or sword clone dot parent rather equal to the player dot backpack. Now, if we run the game you can see that whenever I right click this part, I receive a sword, but if I actually continue to right click, I get a bunch of swords. So I'll show you how to prevent that. To prevent multiple copies, we need to check to see if the player already has a sword. So we'll do if not player dot backpack colon find first child, then in parentheses we'll do, or quotes rather, we'll do classic sword, then we'll copy this or cut this rather, paste it up there. So what this does is it checks to see if the player who right clicked the part has the classic sword already in their backpack. So it'll check the player's backpack and it will look for the first child, which is named classic sword. If this finds a sword, then this will be true. So not true would not execute this. So basically the nil value will return as falsy. So then not nil would actually make this execute. If you don't understand the nil concept, be sure to check out my video on types and conditional statements and that'll definitely help you out. As you can see now when I write click it, I get the part. If I right click it again though, I'm not getting any additional swords. That covers all the events to do with click detectors. Now we need to talk about the properties. So there's two properties to talk about. The first one is the max activation distance. Default is 32, which means a player has to be within 32 studs to actually be able to click the part. So that means right here, we have 16 studs and 16 studs. So a player has to be within this distance to the part to be able to click it. If we were to change the click detector's max activation distance to 16, that means the player would have to be within the green part to be able to click it. You can change that to whatever you want, but that just gives you the ability to change the range so a player can't click something from across the map for example. There's also the cursor icon property. And to use this, you can go to the toolbox and go to images. You can search for just some cursors. I'll type cursor in. And as you can see, I get one right here. If you right click it, copy the asset URI, go to the cursor icon property, paste it in, and then you can play the game. And you'll see that now whenever I actually mouse over this, I get the new cursor icon. That wraps up this video. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like the video if it helped you out. Subscribe for more in the future and comment any questions below.